Welcome back. So last time um, I was actually in the process of tearing the engine down so we could take it to dyno. Here you can see we've got the hoist and strung it up over the CNC machine or lifted the engine off the mount. And there you can see the adapter plate that I got um, borrowed from the guys with the dyno shop. And I've got that in place and ready to drill the holes. Uh, so there you can see now the holes are drilled there so we can bolt that onto our um, block and uh, be ready for the dyno. Meanwhile, the guys are still working on uh, plenty of these molds for the ribs, still sort of pushing along. So um, I know you guys are probably getting tired of seeing that, but probably not as tired as the guys are of, of actually doing them. But anyway, they're making good progress. And I've only got, a, um, I think, a couple to go now for that first batch, which was all the ones for uh, the wings. And so we've done the ones for the wings and the ones for the strakes. And so what's remaining now are the ones for the winglets and also the ones for the four plane that we'll be doing a little bit later on. And as you can see I finished up with the engine, got it back on the little portable stand there and we'll be using that uh, to transport it uh, over to the dyno shop uh, next week on Monday and get it all back running again and then it'll be time for MoTeC to show up and uh, do the tuning for us. Uh, meanwhile Jeff's been busy finishing off uh, the last of these um, brackets for the flight control pulleys and bell cranks and such. So these are the ones that um, are very outboard there on the wings. And these are ones here that uh, are on the spar, on the main spar. So he's done a good job on all those and those just have to be, have the pulleys bolted into place. And there's a couple more there from the spar as well. So nearly all of that is done with respect to the flight controls and those brackets. And speaking of flight controls, I wanted to sort of show you kind of what is involved with this. There's a whole bunch of parts in here. Now, Mark did all the detailed design for this. I ended up, you know, doing the conceptual design a long, long time ago. But Mark's gone and specced it out with his, you know, putting his engineering hat on. So as you can see, lots of different bits and pieces in here, and these all have to be made. Some of them are off-the-shelf items that we can buy, but ones like this plate here, that's something else that we have to make ourselves because um, it's custom diameter on there. So that's uh, aluminum out of you know three different sheets of uh, eighth inch aluminum that we have to basically cut. So I'll probably just be getting some flats. Well, I've actually ordered some flat stock for that. And we'll just probably cut it out on the machine because it can cut a nice uh, round circle for us. And you've got all these other different little bits and pieces in here for the cables. So it's just a whole bunch of little items and stuff that need to be ordered. So I wanted to sort of take you through the process of how I do this and keep it all sort of, um, you know, without messing up or missing something. So this is the monster spreadsheet I created a while ago that um, I'm using to keep a track of things. And as you can see down the bottom there, I've got different tabs for all the different um, sort of subsections that make up the aircraft. And this one is, uh, you know, for the flight controls. And up the top there, you can see different totals that are um, added up for all the different line items. And SolidWorks has a good way of pulling out a bill of materials uh, from an assembly. So I pulled out the bill of materials for the ones, the flight controls that you're just looking at and basically paste it all in here. And the ones, the items that start with a PM, those are custom ones that we have to make and everything else is generally off the shelf. And when I order something, I change that, um, the quantity column there to yellow with a background. And when it arrives, I, I change it to green. So I know, uh, you know what, what I've ordered and what's arrived. Um, so when it comes time to put everything together, I know that we've got it and it's sitting in a box somewhere. And generally I put all the, the bits and pieces for one of these assemblies uh, in one big box or you know break it into sort of groups. Anyway, as you can see scrolling down the list here, there's a whole bunch of stuff <laughs> just, just for the flight controls. So just to give you an idea of the level of complexity. And then over here I put uh, paste a link to where actually I bought that particular item from. Uh, so we have that for reference later on when we want to uh, reorder. And then up at the very top you get a, a, a total of the whole thing. And you know that was almost a thousand dollars, but um, you know two of that, um, two, or sorry, four hundred of that was for the sticks. Anyway, so onto the avionics. So this is the avionics um, list that I've ordered now, and all the garment stuff. And most of this will be sort of uh, starting to arrive maybe late next week. And as you can see, just going through there, all the different items: the autopilot, um, pedo tube, um, or whatever we got there, uh, transponder. Anyway, basically all that stuff there, and the total of that uh, comes to about $40,000. And uh, to answer somebody's question, uh, we, had, we did actually consider Dyna, but I just think um, I've used Garmin uh, more than I've ever used Dyna, and I'm really you know comfortable with it. 
and I think it integrates really nicely with all the different components including their autopilot so we've decided to go with that and the pricing I price Dynon and it, for the same amount of equipment that does the same thing it ends up being about the same price and last time I showed you how I was laying out the different uh, components of the avionics uh, in the CAD here so we can see where everything is that's that engine indication unit that's going to be in the engine bay and now I've kind of moved on a little bit further of actually putting connectors and starting to run cables between them and uh, getting the right connector with the right number of pinouts and all that sort of stuff is something I have to sort of pull out the manual and then th these ones I've actually been running right now is just the CAN bus connection so you know a bunch of the different uh, Garmin um, avionics work on this single bus where everything's sort of daisy chained together so I've got most of that laid out right now and uh, I've, you know I've still got a lot more to do because I've got to put the power that's just for the data connection right now I've got to put run the power wires for that and then I'll also have to do all the other wiring you know for the audio panel and all the headphone things and you know all the lights and everything for the vertical power there's a whole bunch of stuff still to be done but anyway I'm making a bit of a start on it there which is good and uh, so once you've got uh, one of these sort of uh, paths in there for where the wire is going to run you can actually go and look at it uh, separately from everything else so this is the, the first one and there's going to be a whole bunch of these probably you know four or five uh, main ones and then probably a bunch of smaller ones where there's just one thing connecting this to one other thing but um, the great thing about SolidWorks is uh, once you've got this here you can actually flatten this thing out and it creates a nice sort of drawing for you and because it's you know quite a big um, harness this one it uh, ends up being you know quite a bit messy of a diagram but basically this is kind of what it looks like and then you can kind of drill down and look at the various different uh, tables that come with this so I just sort of work through these so this is a circuit summary and this basically is just showing you uh, the different wires that are going from one connector to another um, with their total length and which connector they run from and which connector to and then the, the wires inside there so we've got a white wire and, a, and then a white blue wire in there and those are all you know CAN bus wires that are all joined together so that's the first part of that and I need to spend a little bit more time to see how I can sort of organize this so I can print this stuff out instead of just being able to look at it on the screen okay so the next table is um, this one here that has the uh, list of the different uh, components in there so you see we have uh, um, five DB9 connectors and one DB37 connector and then CAN bus wire with 256 inches in total uh, for this one so far and then we can move on to each particular connector and it gives us um, a detail of what pin is um, being used in there and which wire uh, goes to that pin like so the white and then the white so the white goes to the number one pin and the white blue goes to the number two pin on that one and this is the connector here for the, uh, the GTR 20 which is the um, secondary radio so that has um, 37 pins on it and you know the CAN bus there you'll see pin 6 and pin 7 listed twice and that's because it comes in and it goes back out on both of those wires so uh, you know using this um, diagram here it's pretty easy um, to go on and figure out you know how to create this harness and you see that there's the lengths again um, of each of the different sections there and of course I'll have to add extra on there um, to allow for you know the CAN bus wiring um, anyway this is how I find uh, the pinouts looking in the manual here uh, this is the G3X manual and uh, most of the pinouts are here and you can see looking for CAN bus high and CAN bus low those are the ones that are being used uh, strictly for CAN bus and they're the ones that I'm interested in right now just for this harness so uh, in it, you know some of the components don't have CAN bus or at least I haven't been able to find the details whether they have it or not It'll, I'll know more once the hardware arrives um, and then uh, you know obviously some of these different connectors like this is that one for the GTR 20 and you can see there's a ton of different stuff in here apart from the CAN bus all the different connections for the push to talk and the uh, you know uh, speakers and microphones and the headphones and all that sort of stuff um, for the whole audio uh, operation there you can see auxiliary and all that sort of stuff so it looks complicated but you know if you just work through it a bit at a time then you ultimately end up getting there but uh, as you can see I've still I've only just started really with um, you know doing the wiring here I've still got the G5 there the GSU 25 the 307 hasn't been wired up yet uh, the transponder hasn't been wired up the ADSB backup battery system there hasn't been wired up yet and the vertical power none of that's been sort of done yet so I still got a lot to do but 
And over here on the right, you can see all the different connectors that, that are available, and you can create your own custom ones, which, which I've already done for the vertical power. But anyway, you'll see more on that um, coming in, in updated or new episodes later on. And then ultimately, you'll see when I start wiring the harness together uh, for real. So that's our update for this week, and thanks again for watching.